Hey, good afternoon, everyone. All right, we're going to get started real fast here, jump in and go through. My name is Charles Johnston. I'm the uh, subject matter expert for Pearson Kelly. We're going to have Brock Glidewell on with us today from Pearson Kelly, Nima and Ronnie and Chad Lorette from Verkata, and they're going to present some camera information. We're going to jump on over. We will follow up with everyone after the call and reach out to you to get some information to get either a uh, Ricotta Tumblr from Yeti or a Uber Eats gift card. So we're gonna jump in and let Brock go through this now. He's gonna cover some cloud best practices, some remote monitoring solutions, then we'll jump into the Ricotta demo and go through all of that. And then we'll deal with questions and answers after that. We're gonna present Brock Gladwell now. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. Um, yeah, so, We've been all probably to a lot of webinars over the past couple of weeks. It kind of seems to be the thing uh, that everybody's doing as we're trying to stay productive and look forward to, you know, what's next. And I really just kind of wanted to start off with just uh, almost a take a breath moment. Uh, whether you're an MSP or uh, a small to medium business, um, whatever brought you here to kind of look at what we've been able to accomplish as business owners, as IT staff and support over the last three weeks uh, to, to basically mobilize, you know, a huge percentage of America's worst workforce um, is not a small undertaking. Um, and so I think as uh, we've been trying to figure out, you know, how to manage some of the things that are going on, I think it's really important that we just also don't forget to take care of yourself and uh, understand that what we've done is no small task. Uh, so I just want to start off with that and just say, you know, whatever brought you here, um, you know, you're all doing the right things. You're working uh, for the right reasons. You're looking out for your clients and uh, it shouldn't go understated. Um, I just wanted to really quick talk about a few cloud best practices. And when I say cloud, it's pretty generic. Um, we're just talking about any, any application or document solution that's not locally hosted, um, you know, on your own servers or your own machines. Um, what has been great about this, uh, if, if we can, uh, you know, find some silver linings is it's really forced a lot of businesses to kind of look at their current environment. Um, what all do you have that is mission critical and who are your mission critical users that you've got out there? Um, so I think now is a good time as ever to take this to document your applications, whether they be um, ERP or CRM document uh, applications, and make sure that, you know, what are the ones that we have to stay in business with? Are they hosted? Are they in the cloud? And who are the users that need access to those uh, applications and those documents. It kind of might, it might be something that, you know, seems a little bit elementary, but I think a lot of people don't realize this until they're in a crisis. Um, so I think now is as good time as any to make sure that everybody is taking those uh, precautions to make sure that when these things come up, they usually come up in haste. And so the, uh, the most that we can minimize downtime, a loss of productivity by being able to just shift from, hey, we're in the office to now we're at home. We know exactly who needs what. Um, I think now's a good time to document all those practices. Uh, understanding cloud security, uh, this has been a really hot topic lately and probably could be you know, multiple webinars just based off of this. But I just kind of wanted to put out there some best practices um, so people can understand you know, how are my devices protected at home uh, versus my devices protected at the office. And I think it's really important that if you're using a managed service provider or if you have internal IT staff, whatever your situation is, to really push that conversation um, to say, how does this apply off, off premises? Um, do we have extra instances of antivirus or ransomware protection that we can actually throw on to some of these personal devices at home? Um, are we taking computers home and working from home? Uh, are we remote uh, desktoping into uh, solutions that are at the office? Um, because all the same security practices that we talk about every day in IT are actually still in play and they're magnified. 
because they are not hardened by productive um, and production level networks. Um, so I think it's really important. There's a ton of resources out there right now, uh, best security practices for how to work from home, uh, to take those things into consideration and make sure that your, your workforce uh, understands that now is as good time as any to be extremely vigilant in everything they're doing uh, when they're working from home. And lastly, I think something that you're going to start hearing a lot more about is how do we transition this back to once we do go into um, our normal office setting environment? Um, and I think it's a really good chance for uh, business owners, for managed service providers, for CFOs, for CEOs to really think about what has been working over the past couple of weeks. Like I noticed internally that our team is actually closer uh, now than we were before. And so kind of understanding that there might be some aspects of the way you're working now that you want to hold on to whenever you move back into the office environment. Um, so I think really thinking about what works, what doesn't work, where were your pain points? Because a lot of what we found is this has magnified um, some of the problems that we all kind of thought were underlying with our IT infrastructure or processes and procedures. Um, this has really magnified those things. So think about as you start to look forward to, okay, how are we gonna get back to our, our normal working environment? What things do we wanna address that were major pain points during this time versus what do we wanna keep a hold of? Uh, because I think I've seen a lot of really positive things out there. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give uh, some of those best practices out there. Obviously, you know, we're always open to questions um, and we've got some really cool information for you guys coming from Bricada. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over uh, and let them take over this. And uh, thank you very much for joining. Thanks, Brock. This is uh, Chad Lorette, um, Senior Channel Sales Manager over here at Bricada. With me today is Nima and Ronnie, one of our solutions engineers. Uh, I'm going to be going to uh, I'm going to go I'm going to be giving you guys a quick uh, just background on Verkata, talk about our video surveillance solution, uh, and then Nima is going to come in and demonstrate our access control solution. Um, Verkata is a cloud hybrid enterprise video surveillance and access control solution. Um, our vision really is to help you streamline your physical security practices uh, to reduce your operating expenses and keep your sites safer, whether it's being able to quickly remote into your sites and monitor assets, um, if it's receiving proactive alerting around threats and being able to respond in real time, or just overall reducing your operating expenses and your total cost of ownership around these systems, we can help you do that. Um, Verkata really aims to remove the complexity of traditional video surveillance and access control. Um, and the first thing we did is we removed the on-premise NVR, DVR, and server storage devices completely from your network as they relate to video surveillance and access control. Um, so, you know, by doing that, now you're just working with the camera itself, right? All of our cameras have a built-in industrial grade solid state drive that can hold up to 365 days of continuous recorded footage at 24 frames per second in high definition. And then how it operates is it sends encrypted metadata and thumbnails packets to the cloud for viewing purposes. And as you engage with footage, you're then able to archive an unlimited amount of that footage and store it into Amazon Web Services forever. On top of giving you proactive real-time alerting, um, you can also share this information out instantly to people that need it most, like first responders, um, or if it's a legal situation, things like that. And you can do everything not only from a browser-based application, but you can also do it right from your smartphone. So we're providing real-time information and analytics to your fingertips in critical times. Uh, so that you can resolve those situations faster. And as Brock mentioned, you know, simple cloud tech, the world's changing very, very quickly. Um, and, you know, being able to adapt is critical. And so, you know, simple cloud technology like Verkata can really enable you to adapt to different environments while still keeping full control over your assets and, and having access to information that can help you uh, through these transitions. 
Um, all of our um, cameras operate at very low bandwidth, so they're not going to eat up your network. At rest, they operate on just 20 kilobits, which is about as much as you would use to send a Gmail. And as I mentioned, you manage everything across all your sites from a single pane of glass. And I'm going to go ahead and jump in here to the platform and, and show you guys what the software looks like. So um, just navigating to our Vercata command, which is our web-based console. Uh, we do integrate in with single sign-on and two-factor authentication. We use Okta here. They're a customer of ours, um, so we use Okta for single sign-on. We also integrate in with Active Directory for bulk user management. So I'm going to go ahead and get signed in here, and then I'm going to wait for my two-factor authentication code. And we're going to get logged in. So the, the first thing I really want to highlight is how quick and easy Vercata is to set up. Keep in mind, again, this is a plug and play camera, POE, Cat5, Cat6, right out of the box. It only makes outbound traffic through port 443 on your network. So from a cybersecurity perspective, it's 100% secure without the need for additional software or hardware. There's no configuration needed to your firewall. You don't have to forward or open up any ports. You literally just have to connect it to a Cat5, Cat6 PoE connection via a switch or an injector. Uh, and then you, you mount it in place where you want it. Uh, the camera, then you take the serial number from the camera or you scan the QR code on the box right from your phone and the camera downloads the latest firmware update and it's up and running in just a few minutes. The camera also has features like auto leveling, auto adjustments, uh, orientation adjustment that you can do right from the software on your phone. So by the time you even get off the ladder from where you've mounted it, um, you know, it's ready to go. You're not having to talk to somebody back in your IDF closet and them telling you how to adjust the camera. So you can get several cameras up and running in just a matter of minutes. Uh, we do a ton of mobile deployments. These devices work on cradle point LTE routers, solar power, battery backup power, there, it's a very flexible solution. We're working with customers that have 3,000 cameras in their brick and mortar locations, and we're working with customers that have, you know, four or five of them that they needed quickly to pop up during critical times and be able to monitor their assets and, you know, keep, uh, keep tight control and, and access to, to what's going on at their sites. And then once the camera's configured, you can then add it to different sites, right? Depending on where it's located, sites are how you organize a group of cameras. So you can see here, we have several cameras at our headquarters in San Mateo, California, and we've grouped them based on floor. And then on the left pane, you can also see we have cameras in London, cameras in Oakland, cameras at a Siemens factory, who's one of our investors. And so once you get the cameras online, you can then group them based on how you want to assign permissions to users, right? And I'll show you what user permissions look like here. So we'll jump over to user permissions. And basically, um, it's very easy to add users. Like I said, we also integrate with Active Directory, Microsoft Azure, and others. Uh, so you can bulk upload users into the system. Or you can add them right here from from the console. And once a user's added, you then assign them access to the different sites, basically the different groupings of cameras that you've set up. So if you have building A versus building B, and you wanna give permission to different sites, that's how you do this by user. And there's four different profiles you can give access to, uh, depending on what type of access you would want them to have to the, to the system and to that site. And what we, what we also have is the ability to create groups. And groups are a way that you can assign bulk permissions to an entire set of people. So if your IT team needs to have the same level of access to all of the sites, you can assign users to the IT group and you can efficiently and quickly give access to your camera solution as needed. And then what happens is you then get a Google integrated map let me just get to where we are here. There we go. So Google integrated map um, where you have access to viewing your sites um, and you'll have pin placement across the map where you can then quickly uh, log in to, uh, 
to those different sites. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta go back into my Mercado sales organization here. So here's the map. You see the pen placement across the map here. Uh, this is where we have different cameras across our sites. We're gonna focus here at our headquarters in San Mateo, California. What you'll notice is a bunch of cameras laid out in green. Cameras mean, or green means the cameras are online and they're healthy. If a camera was to go offline, it's going to turn yellow and you're gonna receive a real-time alert that the camera has gone offline. So now you're being proactive in your solution and you're getting alerted if situations happen so that you can respond more quickly and not realize the camera's been offline for days or weeks when you actually go to use it, right? Um, I can click on any one of these cameras and get a live feed instantly. Uh, we also have the ability to upload floor plans. So you'll see here a floor plan of our headquarters uh, with camera placement throughout. We can also detect motion. So you'll see cameras start to pulsate as they detect motion around your site. To, to, you know, so you can quickly go in and you know, see what's going on. Um, these also, these cameras are um, smart AI learning cameras. So if someone was to tamper with the camera, hit it with a bat, uh, try to crowbar it off the ceiling or the wall, you're going to receive an alert of that incident with a live link to that camera. And the um, camera is also going to offload the most recent footage so you can go back and view that later. Uh, lastly, if someone was to spray paint a camera or cover it with a hat, you're also going to receive an alert of that incident as well. Um, and so again, you can click on these cameras and you can open up multiple cameras if you'd like on the right pane. So you can view what's going on at your site. Um, and you can see here cars passing and it's triggering the motion detection on the camera. Um, and then ultimately, if I wanna go into a camera, I just click on that camera. And now I'm looking at a live view of that camera instantly, right? So that's one of the, the things with Vercada, we're trying to make video surveillance and access controls very simple, right? Simple for you guys to navigate just like you would your smartphone. And so I've logged in here now and I'm viewing my front door camera at my headquarters in San Mateo. And some of the things that we do really well are searching, searching for incidences that happened and pulling up information based on certain attributes that I may wanna save and archive for, like I said, legal purposes or other um, you know, situations that may happen. So some of the ways you can search, and I think it's important to note that Vercada is recording all the time. It is not just based on motion, right? So with that, you need to then be able to search quickly through all of that footage without just having to sit there and fast forward and rewind. So some of the ways you can narrow down, we have historical view. These are 24 hour thumbnails and fast forward and rewinding through the thumbnails is just simply scrolling your mouse across the frame. Um, I can jump back to any previous day. Let's say I wanted to look at footage from last Wednesday and I wanna look at four hour clips and I wanna see heat maps, which are gonna show me the times during the day where I'm seeing the most foot traffic. These are some of the features available at Vercada to help you narrow down what you're looking for quickly. And so you're scrolling through a frame, the blue bands at the bottom are designating uh, situations of motion. Um, I can jump these even down into one hour clips if I'd like, right? So now I'm scrubbing smaller amounts of footage, bounding box around people in green, bounding boxes around uh, vehicles in yellow. So it's very quickly for you to narrow down your search to specific day and time and quickly scrub through footage to find what you may be looking for. So that's the first way of searching footage that I wanted to highlight. The second way is what we call motion-based searching. So I can do what's called a motion grid and I can set a grid up around this front door and I can quickly filter for any time a person crossed this grid. And you can see I've instantly filtered the last 30 days of footage to any time somebody has walked into this doorway. So I can then load up a clip. You'll see here, someone's waiting to access the building. I can add in other cameras if I'd like. So I wanna add in our lobby camera to get another view of this. And then it basically align, lines them based on time, person's waiting outside to get food inside. Um, and so we could follow them throughout the building if we need to. Now, ultimately, if I wanna archive this and save this clip, I click the downward box arrow here and I can put a note, food delivery, 
I can adjust my start and end times, and then ultimately I can archive this uh, into AWS. So we store everything on Amazon Web Services. But keep in mind, that's why it's hybrid, right? Because the camera's storing the local footage, and then we're archiving it from the camera into the cloud. And what that does is that allows me to then go to my archive section and view all of the clips that I've archived, you know, since I've had Verkata as my solution. And I can quickly load a clip. You'll notice here once it loads, there's watermarking in the top left corner for legal purposes. I can, uh, you know, speed up, slow down, take a screenshot. Um, I could download this as an MP4 if I want to email it out and share it with people. But even better than emailing a file out into the internet to end up on YouTube someday, you can just share the clip right from the cloud. And it's an encrypted link. Keep in mind, we encrypt data both on the camera and in transit to the cloud, as well as Amazon Web Services is one of the most renowned cloud storage companies on the planet. So everything's gonna be fully secure and encrypted for you. And you can share it via text, um, SMS text, or an email link to any recipient. And then you can choose how long they have access to it for, and you can revoke that access at any time. All right, so I've showed you how to um, search based on history. I've showed you how to search based on motion. I've shown you how to quickly archive footage that you'd wanna save. Let's look at some of the other cool ways that Mercata can help you find footage that you may be looking for based on things like attribution, right? So we're first gonna jump in and we're gonna look at our people analytics. And what people analytics allows me to do is search footage based on clothing attribution or people attribution, right? So I can search for anyone that was on this camera that was wearing a red shirt. And I'm gonna quickly filter through the footage and I'm gonna populate results of people that were wearing red shirts. I can then search this across all my cameras. So I come in here to all my cameras across all my sites and I say, I wanna see people that were wearing red shirts. And I'm gonna quickly populate results of people that were wearing red shirts. So there's other attributes as well, like um, you know, color of pants, wearing a backpack, things of that nature. So it's allowing you to quickly find someone that may be suspicious. They didn't really see what they looked like, but they know they were wearing you know, a certain color of clothing and you can quickly search for that incident. Another way we can search is what we call um, facial matching, right? So the camera takes high resolution images of faces that come across, that come across it. Um, and what I can do is I can select a face and I'm gonna select one out of here. It gives you a quick snapshot here. I'm gonna select this face and we're gonna see if this face showed up on, on this camera specifically. And now what I can do is now that I found this face, I can then search the same face across all my cameras, across all my sites, to see where this face may have also shown up. And you're doing this within seconds, right? Keep in mind, because it's an all-in-one solution, we've built the cameras and the software, our result population is very, very accurate, and it populates information within seconds, right at your fingertips. Again, everything I'm showing you here on the web browser can also be done right from your cell phone. Um, and lastly, guys, another way that we can search uh, faces is we can upload a face. So I can come here and I can upload a picture of somebody. So this is our founder's LinkedIn photo. And we can search for anytime Hans has shown up on this camera specifically. And then again, if, if, he, if he populates or he doesn't, we can then take that search across all of my cameras. So he didn't populate on this one. I can search all my cameras if I'd like. Um, so let me just wait for this to load here just a second, and then I can search his face across all the cameras. And now we'll see if Hans showed up, and he did a lot. This is our office, so um, you can see everywhere Hans has been over the last 30 days in our office building. Okay, so taking it one step further, so now I've shown you history search based on time and date. I've shown you motion-based searching. I've shown you how to search based on clothing attribution and facial matching. Let's look at how we can search for vehicles. So if you have a camera that's viewing vehicles coming into your location, 
you can search based on vehicle analytics and you can do color make model of car. So we'll do car, uh, we'll do Tesla, and we'll see anytime a white Tesla is shown up on this camera. And there you can see it instantly populates results of white Teslas. Coming soon is gonna be the ability to search for license plates. Um, so if you know a partial plate of the vehicle, you can search that and you can pull up you know, that car on the footage. A couple last things, guys. We, uh, we have viewing station. This is if you have a command center or a guard station. You want guard, security guards to be able to uh, view cameras, but not necessarily have access to your console. Um, so this is a front-facing device. Um, and essentially, you can fully customize the tiles and which cameras you want to show up on here. And we've even optimized some of these tiles for motion. So as cameras are, see more motion, they will populate uh, in these tiles above. And then for smaller customers that maybe don't need to see 150 cameras, um, they can use what's called local grids. Uh, this can run on an Apple TV and you can view a smaller amount of cameras in the same manner. Um, it's not optimized as well as the viewing station device is, as that's a separate product that we sell. Uh, but this will still allow you to monitor a, camera, a smaller amount of cameras. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there. Uh, one more feature, though, I did want to highlight is, you know, in the event of an emergency, I think it's critical to be able to get live, a live feed of a camera out instantly to first responders. And we are one of the only solutions that allow you to do that in the way that we do it. So let's say there was a car accident or a fight or a fire or some sort of emergency situation, and I needed to quickly share out this camera feed to first responders. I can simply click this button here. I can, again, just same way as I shared an archived clip, I can do an SMS or email, and I can add in my recipient, and I can choose how long they have access to that live um, camera feed for. And they'll receive it in probably 10 to 15 seconds. They'll be looking at the same camera view as you. We have tons of customer stories on why this feature is, is important. Um, and, and, and those stories are available on our website. Um, I did want to show you guys one thing. You can also embed a live feed um, into your website. Uh, so we have a, a camera viewing the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And you can see here they use it for weather and traffic. But we also have other customers um, utilizing this feature uh, to show a live stream of things that might be going on uh, that are important. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna pass it off to um, Nima, who's gonna take you guys through our um, access control solution. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Chad. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen right here um, and, and perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start with the slam slide, uh, go through some slides showing you what the actual product looks like, and then I'll dive into the software and show you guys what it looks like from the software perspective. Um, so a lot of companies we talk to, they say, wow, I, I really love your guys' cameras. They're an excellent solution. Uh, they you know, remove the need for an NVR. It's a lot of pain off of our back as IT, um, and we love it. So naturally we wanna use access control, and, and you know, that's where Vercata goes into next, that ease of use and that simplicity uh, we're trying to bring to access control today. Um, and really the theme behind it is how do we have a single pane of glass so you can manage everything in your smart building uh, by logging into one system uh, and you can see your cameras, you can see your access control, uh, maybe in the future, your alarm system, your HVAC, your PA, your lighting uh, will all be available from one uh, single pane of glass as well. So that's really where we're going uh, with, with access control. Um, so this is really what access control looks like today. So, uh, you know, at your building, you probably have on the left uh, what's called a mercury board. So that's the actual physical hardware that basically says door open, door closed. It controls the relays and the power behind the door. And on the right, this is where the pane lives. It's in that physical actual box, that local PC um, that is uh, at the same location as the door access control. Um, and basically, this is usually either a virtual machine um, or, you know, it's again that physical box. And, and the problem is uh, usually one or two people only know how to use it. Um, this system goes down. Um, it's a really old version of Windows that never gets any updates. Um, and really, when it does get updates, it's like twice a year and, you know, you usually have to come on site and, and, and upgrade it. And it's, it's really a big pain in the neck. Um, additionally, the actual hardware itself, the door controllers, uh, they only have about megabytes of memory. And when you look at that design and that architecture, 
it's really designed from 30 years ago. Um, so Verkata's door access solution is much different. We don't require a PC. We don't require a virtual machine. There's no SQL database that's managing all of your employees uh, that have badges. There's, there's none of that that really exists. The complex networking that's set up, especially if you have more than one location, uh, that does not exist with Verkata, with Verkata door access. Um, we have gigabytes of memory in our door controller solution. Uh, that allows us to do things like download footage from a camera and do artificial intelligence on the actual door controller itself. It's a completely new way of thinking about physical security. And realistically, if your organization wants a single pane of glass and ease of use and wants to manage everything from uh, uh, one, one area and one location, uh, this is really the way to go. Uh, so again, we thought about it exactly the same way as the cameras, as Chad showed you. We redesigned it from the ground up. Uh, we have our own readers, so you can actually use Bluetooth with your phone to get into a door. Uh, it's the 21st century. Everyone has a, a phone, an iPhone, an Android. You download the Verkata Pass app. You log in. Your employees use that to get into their doors. Um, and, and really, it's a great feature that a lot of our customers use. Uh, and there's no servers, no databases, and managing multiple sites is a complete breeze. Uh, gone are the days of trying to find IP addresses for you know, door controllers and having that talk to your uh, virtual machine. Uh, having a VPN in or actually having to access the, the, the door controller software directly to, to open your doors and set schedules. That's all a thing of the past. Uh, so this is what the actual hardware looks like. So this is our four door controller and how this device works is it's just like the cameras. Um, why would we make it any different? It has a serial number. You associate the serial number with your command account. And that's essentially how you get this device talking to the software. Um, so it's really simple to set up, really easy to use. We have our own power supply that we supply, which is optional as well. And you can see that on the right-hand side. Uh, this particular device has an ethernet port that plugs into a switch that gives it connectivity. And it has another ethernet port that can daisy chain off of multiple door controllers in case you have 10 doors, 15 doors, 30 doors, maybe even 100 doors. Um, so this is another view of what it looks like. And then this is also our multi-format readers. So we're compatible with a lot of other readers on the market. If you have HID readers, chances are we're compatible. Uh, but this is what uh, our own reader looks like if you wanted to leverage the use of Bluetooth in your phone and you wanted your employees, you know, maybe if they forgot their badge one day and they have their phone, they can certainly use that to get in. So I'm just gonna switch tabs here really quickly. And traditionally, how you manage door access is you have a thick client that's installed on your PC and you try and directly access that with that thick client. But with Verkata, you just log in the same way. And as Chad showed you, these are all the cameras. You add a device in, in again, the same format. Um, you, you put in the serial number, you do the same thing with the door controllers. You put the, the serial number here, add device, it'll walk you through the process. I get a tab here called door access. Again, the same engineers that work on the cameras are also the ones that work on door access. Verkata is the only company in the world that has an organic integration between the cameras and the door access. For many other companies, it's just been an afterthought. Um, and it's been a very expensive license and a very expensive process to get cameras talking with door access. But with Verkata, it's literally two separate tabs in the top left. You click access and you have a list of all the different doors that are electrified on the Verkata system. So this is Verkata HQ, this is the address. We have everything segmented out by floors. Um, and you know, if I click on a, a particular image, I get a live feed of the actual door. I can remotely unlock it by clicking this padlock. It'll tell me the door position, if it's closed or open. Uh, if I go to users, this is where I can manage all of the people that have a badge within my organization. Uh, it's really simple to do. We integrate with Active Directory, Skim, whatever it, it may be. If I want to add a user, I click a button, I put in their facility code, their card number, and click save. Um, and it's literally that simple. That person is now uh, a, a user on the Verkata system. Uh, let's just say I want to dive into a particular user, for example. I can literally see exactly where this person went into a door from for the last year, and I have the video evidence to prove that as well. Um, and I found this in literally a matter of seconds. So for example, let's pull up this clip right here. Uh, this camera is offline, so you know, let's just go to, to this one, for example. Um, if I click on it, it'll immediately pull up the footage right then and there. It'll automatically sync the times, um, and then it'll, 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 it'll play the footage right there, and it'll show me exactly when this person came through. I can save the footage, I can share it with authorities, and I can do that in literally a matter of seconds. Uh, usually when I tell people to do this on their own solution, they either A, can't do it, uh, or B, it takes, it takes some hours. Um, so literally the amount of time it takes to do an investigation is going from hours to literally a matter of minutes. Um, and obviously I can come over here, I can add a new card, I can revoke it, I can deactivate it. Um, literally anyone can use the system. It's not just two people in IT that only know how to use it. Um, you know, anyone from HR, everyone will be able to log in and do this. They can even do this from their phone. 
Um, I have different groups of access as well. So for example, if I want all my employees to have access to certain doors, all I do is create a group, call it all employees, add all my employees to the group and give it an access level. And the access level has a schedule associated with it. So what times does this group have access to, to my facility? Which doors do they have access to? And I can do that right here from this, this, uh, this site right here. Um, and it's really easy to tell which door is which because A, they're all labeled and B, this is Vercata. So we have cameras as well. There's an organic integration between the doors and the cameras. I can see a live view of the door itself. So I know exactly what I'm giving access to. Um, let's just say I wanted to pull the report on a specific door or a specific employee. Really easy to do that. I just go over here. Let me go ahead and search for myself. Uh, and let's search in the past year. I haven't been in the office in a while. Um, this will give me a list of the exact times I came in, the exact times I came out. Um, I can export this in a CSV format uh, and so on. Uh, my favorite part about Vercata is let's just say that I'm searching for where an employee was at a specific time. All I do is go up here, put in the name of the employee, and then drill it down by a certain time period. And I literally have every single time that I try to come into the building right here. This is all the video evidence. So let's just go to this clip, for example. Um, you know, this is me coming in, uh, I think a few months ago, actually. Um, and this caught it on camera. Uh, you know, let's just go over here. This is me coming into the building a few weeks ago. Um, I just went out for lunch and I came back in. And as you can see, I open the door, I come in, I can pause it, do the same things that I did uh, like Chad showed you. I can go ahead and archive this. I can share it with authorities in a matter of seconds. Here in California, we work closely with the highway patrol. Um, so, you know, a lot of the, the, the bolos that we send out, our customers like to send a highway patrol that has this, the license plate number. Um, and it's really easy to share information from there. Here's another clip, my two cameras. Uh, I click on it and I instantly find the footage of me. Uh, it knows that it's me because of my badge. And obviously our cameras have, you know, artificial intelligence and face matching. So they're able to tell whether this is actually me or not. Um, and then it'll alert me in the system. Uh, and if I go to a specific door, you know, let's just go to, uh, you know, our entry from reception. So this is what this looks like. Let's just say you have a receptionist that monitors the front door. Um, you can remotely unlock the door by clicking this padlock. It'll, it'll unlock it. And then if I scroll down, it'll actually give me the history of exactly who came into this door at what particular time. Um, but let's just say that I'm doing an investigation. Again, I'm, I'm interested in certain time periods. I can pull up this graph. I can search for a specific time and then I can drill it down to events. So I want to only see where an access was rejected to this door. It'll then only pull up clips where someone tried to get in but was unsuccessful. Um, so again, it's really easy to find out who was trying to get into your facility at what time, because again, what's the most important thing for access control and cameras and physical security? It's to mitigate risk. Um, and really this system uh, is helping to do that because it takes the amount of time it takes to do an investigation and cuts it down to nearly a fourth. Um, and I, obviously I can set schedules for each door in particular. Let's just say that, you know, uh, there's a softball game. There's this particular meeting that's happening and I need the door to be unlocked for, you know, an hour. I can literally do that from my phone from anywhere in the world. It'll take seconds. I don't need to call someone up in IT to do it for me. Um, I have the power to do that myself. Um, so again, really easy system to use, really easy to get online. Um, you know, we've had a lot of customers out there that are currently on the system that have our cameras that love the ease of use. Uh, that love the simplicity. They love the, the way that we share footage. They love the, where, the way that, you know, it sets up. Uh, they love the way that the cameras integrate with the door access. Um, you know, overall, we've gotten great feedback and it's, it's really a solution that's uh, all around a good physical security hold. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it off to, to Chad. Um, and then Thanks, uh, from there we can answer off any, any questions. Appreciate you. All right, let me just uh, reshare my screen here. All right, so let's kind of recap everything really quickly. Why customers love Vercata. Um, first off, you're significantly reducing the amount of infrastructure you have to maintain to utilize state-of-the-art functionality as you saw here today from both video surveillance and access control perspective. No NVRs, no DVRs, no on-premise server storage needed, which means no additional hardware purchasing, uh, no additional configuration and maintenance and refresh and all of the headaches that go into maintaining those types of traditional systems. Um, keep in mind that we also back our hardware with a 10-year manufacturer warranty. I think in terms of total cost of ownership, that's huge. Um, you know, our licensing is all inclusive. So as you purchase products from us, 
uh, if we launch new updates to those to the software side of those products, it, we're, you're not going to pay uh, additionally f to take advantage of those. So as we continue to build out things like the license plate searching that I that I mentioned, um, and additional features to our access control, if you're already paying for those uh, products, um, you, it's an all inclusive license. Um, it's very simple to use and navigate. You saw that today in the live demo. We're not showing you a pre recorded demo. We are showing you live software in an active environment um, and how simple it is for you to find things that you would be important and get those saved and get those shared out to the right people. Um, automatic updating, right? So no more manual maintenance of your hardware and software. The cameras update themselves. The access control door controller will update itself. And so you guys can literally plug these devices in and forget about them until you need to use them and have the confidence to know that they're going to be working. And if there is an issue, it's going to alert you of that issue and you're gonna be able to respond in real time and resolve that situation much more quickly. And then it's very easy to manage user access, right? We integrate with Active Directory, as we mentioned several times, and we have a very intuitive and easy to use um, user management system built into the software natively. Um, the system's smart. So, I mean, it's detecting threats, it's detecting situations that are going on, and it's sending you proactive alerting around those. And our product roadmap is going to continue to be along the lines of building automation and streamlining these practices so that you can reduce your operating expenses, um, improve your total cost of ownership, and ultimately create efficiency for your organization so that you can reallocate those resources into other areas and also keep your site safer. Because as you can see, you're not sacrificing uh, anything with the, the software or the hardware by going with this type of solution. Um, and then lastly, it's easily scalable. Again, plug and play, POE, right out of the box. You can scale from one to thousands of cameras very quickly. Um, and you know, uh, again, as I mentioned, we have the 10 year product warranty. So with that, um, I did wanna let everybody know, uh, we do offer free trials. Uh, we would be glad to send you out cameras, especially if you're in need now uh, for getting some cameras quickly, um, you know, for anything that you may need, or if you wanna just start to uh, think about how to prepare yourself for the future and shifting towards uh, this type of solution. Um, we would love to send you guys out a uh, trial camera uh, to test at your site and see what you guys think um, and, and really see the power behind this by using it yourself. So if you're interested, um, please email charles at pearsonkelly.com uh, and he can go ahead and get you guys set up with a trial. So with that, I think uh, we had a couple of questions. Um, it looked like they may have been answered um, already by the team, which yeah. is great. Uh, so uh, there's a few that we actually want to address. Um, okay. So uh, the first question was, where do the schedules live at the door or in the cloud? Um, so this is for, in, in particular, the, the door access. Um, and, and that's a great question. So uh, it lives in two places. It lives on the door controller itself and in the cloud. Uh, and the reason why it lives in both places is because let's just say that you lose internet or let's just say something happens, right? And let's just say like AWS, you know, for once in a blue moon goes down, something happens. You will always have door schedules and you'll always have your users kept within the door controller. So you can actually use the, you know, use your doors, get into where you need to go. Um, so that's a great question and uh, it, it lives on both. Um, and then the next question was, uh, are most cameras in general wired in or wireless? Is there any issues with Wi-Fi connectivity if they are wirelessly connected via Wi-Fi? Um, that's another great question. Um, so essentially, uh, the one thing that people usually forget about when it comes to Wi-Fi cameras is they still need power. Um, so obviously, there's no battery that you can, you know, plop into a camera and, you know, they're going to be PoE powered. So uh, essentially, if you want to have a wireless solution, you're going to need to have uh, to run a cable to it anyways. So uh, the, the one thing, though, that we've done, we, we, you know, we've, we've worked with cities like City of Memphis. Uh, they're building a smart city um, and they've utilized cradle points, which are mobile LTE routers. Um, and essentially they have uh, SIM cards in them, just like you have with your you know, mobile phone, like Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, whatever it may be. You plop that SIM card into a mobile router, like a cradle point or a pep wave, um, and then that will provide uh, internet connectivity to the camera. 
Um, and then generally, uh, we've made Wi-Fi uh, cameras in the past, um, but we found that a lot of the uh, user experience was really degraded when it came to Wi-Fi because, again, this is an enterprise-grade solution, um, and we want to make sure that the user experience is, is up to par, especially when it comes to something as important as uh, physical surveillance. Perfect. Yeah, and, and I've also seen it successfully set up in a mesh or point-to-point -point, um, connection as well, right? So the, 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 the answers, they, are, they do require power, like Nima said, but they can be set up in a mobile or wireless capacity um, using the proper tools and hardware to, to be able to set that up. Um, if there's any, it uh, looks like there's one more open question here. Uh, do changes made in the access control system get pushed to the controller or does it have a scheduled check-in time, Nima? Uh, they're, they're instant. Um, so the, the controller is constantly talking to our cloud services, so the changes get pushed instantly. Awesome. If there's any last minute questions, uh, please pop those into the Q&A box. Um, we'll give it a few more seconds here for uh, to see if there's any last minute questions. Again, we will follow up with all of you that attended. We really appreciate your time today. We're gonna follow up to see what, uh, what gift you would like to receive. Um, and you'll also have an opportunity then to let uh, the team know if you'd like to receive a, a trial of the, of the solution. Um, so with that, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. On behalf of the entire team, we really appreciate your time. We hope you all stay safe and healthy out there. And if there's anything we can do to help you guys out with anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.